Hey, Scrapbook friends, it's Nicole, and I'm back with episode six of our Christmas in July series using the Creative Memories Joy to the World collection. I know that episode five was a little bit uh, fiddly and definitely time consuming, so this time we have a much, much simpler layout. If you are a beginning scrapbooker, I'm glad you're still with me. Um, this is going to be a super easy layout that you can do quickly. So this will be a nice break from the last one that was like an hour. I'm pretty confident this one's going to be a lot shorter. So this one, for this one, we're going to be using the Joy to the World stickers to create the little border. We're also going to be using um, two pieces from the Tone on Tone, the green leaves and the red stripe. We have used already two red stripes in this series. So now we're into the well, with the last layout, I had to get into another um, pack of the Tone on Tone. So hopefully you, if you open another pack. And then one of the yellow ornaments um, paper that we've used before. So that's all you're going to need. We're also going to be using some of the embellishments. And the Picket Fence border maker cartridge. So this is the this is the cartridge that comes with our regular original border maker system. So nearly everyone who has um, the border maker has this. If you bought the birthday one that was blue, that continues to be blue, um, and comes with the cupcakes, you won't have this one. And you might need to substitute with a different kind of an edge. Um, if that's the case, mention in the comments and I will help you come up with some suggestions of another current uh, border punch that you could use that I think might look nice. Um, but nearly everybody else has this one and it doesn't get a lot of love. I don't see it used a lot, even though theoretically like 90% of us have it. So we're going to use the Picket Fence Border Maker cartridge to make our border. Okay, so super easy. We're going to start by building the border and then we'll put the page together. And our border is going to start with a three inch stripe of the red stripe paper, a three inch strip, and you wanna cut against the direction of the stripe so that you end up with a horizontal piece. All right, three inches wide. I'm trying to leave this where you can see it, but not where it will get in my way. All right, so we're gonna cut a three inch piece of the red on red stripe. Um, you may have a different red. You may have the red with the holly left over from one of our other earlier layouts. You could use that. I just felt like the stripes went better with the green leaves. You could always use the back if you if you choose to use that um, red holly stripe. And then we're going to take our ornament paper. This is the yellow or the gold ornaments with the blue gingham on the back. I haven't used this one yet. I think I'm gonna do a non-Christmas themed layout or two as we get farther into the month because I really am running out of Christmas pictures. Um, but we're gonna use this um, this ornament side for, for the edges of our border and our photo mats. And so we're gonna use the Picket Fence cartridge. And it doesn't really matter which direction you um, you punch this but I'm just gonna go up and down because that's how my brain works. So position your paper against the um, paper guide, close the magnet strip down, and then um, fold the paper guide out of the way. And then we're gonna put uh, a line, this little center piece on the cartridge holder with the little nubs that come out on the, um, on the paper holder, if you don't already know how to do that. Um, and then you're, these little teeth are gonna go into the grooves. So I'm surprised at how many people I meet that um, can't remember how to use their border maker system. My goal is to get you to um, remember how to use that. We are gonna use this little strip for a little bit later in the layout. So if you can keep that um, hole, that's great. And I find that when I'm, when I've got something like that, it's easier for me to pull my whole border cartridge out than trying to slide it down. Sometimes you can slide it down, but I think what happens is that the paper, when it starts getting punched, it kind of sags. It loses some of its um, its strength, and that's when things start to get jammed in, into our um, border maker. So hang on to this little string. Get rid of the rest. And you can go ahead and trim 
this piece right now and then position it again, but I like to just, whenever I'm cutting two borders of the same and the direction works, I like to just flip my paper over and we'll just cut the other side. And that way I do all my punching first and then I do my trimming next. Okay, this is catching on something. It's super humid here, so I don't know if my paper is just a little bit wiggly. But you can see by pulling it out, coming back in, I'm able to keep this little string intact. You're not going to need it intact. We're gonna we're gonna hack it up, but um, this is just gonna make it a little bit easier. You can always cut another piece if you want to. All right, and then we're done with the punching. So we can put our border maker system away and we'll get our trimmer back out. And you just, this doesn't really matter where you cut it. I'm gonna cut it at an inch. Just cause that's a nice easy number and it's gonna keep this intact, make it a little bit easier to work with. So put the points of the little chevrons on the one inch line, make sure it's lined up straight against the top of your trimmer and go ahead and slice that off. And then while we're here, let's go ahead and cut our mats. Um, we're gonna cut this at five and a half, which is the very edge of the trimmer. I know, we all wish that it went to six inches. If I could change one thing about this trimmer, it would be that it went to six inches right here instead of five and a half. But we're gonna do five and a half. You could do six if you want, depending on what kind of pictures you have. Um, I just decided to do five and a half because my pictures lately have been the digital size, which are four by 5.3. And so that's gonna work just fine with, with those digital size pictures. You could do four by six if you want. We're gonna, do, we're gonna actually do three and three quarters by six so that we can put three up and down on our page. So three and three quarters by five and a half or six. That's up to you, depending on what pictures you have. You could wait and do these mats later after you, um, after you know what pictures you're gonna put on here because there are different ways you could you could arrange this. But I had these pictures from my daughter's. Um, so my daughter has graduated. She's actually graduated from college now, but um, in 20, hmm, 2022, maybe, the choir's wearing masks. I think this was in 2020, 2021 or 2022. I don't know. I've printed every Christmas photo I have now so that I can have pictures for this. And they're, I'm going to have to look on my phone to figure out which ones are which. Um, but they always sing the Hallelujah Chorus at their Christmas concert at the high school choir. And she was in choir her whole time. She actually started choir in third grade and was choir all through high school. And so at the Christmas concert, when they sing the Hallelujah Chorus, they invite all the choir alumni to come up and sing with the choir. So that's my daughter right here. Um, and I probably need to put some kind of a little arrow so that you can find her, but I'm gonna journal about that right here. So here's our three um, inch strip. Here are my three photo mats and then my two strip border strips. And we're gonna use the repositionable adhesive. And I am lucky enough to have this, um, this uh, self-adhesive silicone mat. So I'm just gonna put some Oh, no, I just did it on the wrong side. Ignore what I just did. I'm going to put some adhesive on the front side, not on the points, but just back here in the little fence posts. And somebody asked me that in a previous video, I said that I pulled out my other cutting mat to position something. They asked me why I had done that. This just kind of has a little bu buckle in it because it's stretchy, it's not as straight. But for this, I think this is going to work fine. So I'm, it doesn't even have to be real straight right here, but what you want to do, let's zoom in like I like to. All right, what you want to do here is take your um, stripe paper and you wanna cover up all the cutout spot. So here I'm not, I don't want any blue to show through. And I'm kind of using my grid just to make sure that it's as straight as I can get it. But really what I'm doing is just, just trying to position it equally all the way down. And now I've zoomed in too far. You guys can't see what I'm doing at the bottom. All right. 
just position it all the way down. And I'm just kind of looking like up here. Okay, I'm gonna have to adjust this. Up here, you can see it's the red is touching the valley. I don't want it touching the valley. Uh, I want more like I did down here. So because I use the repositionable, I can just adjust this. And I, that's why I was trying, kind of trying to do it on here on the grid so that I've got all the points on this one inch line. And then just to kind of make this a little, a little straighter. Okay, so that's pretty straight. And then I can tell by looking down here at the bottom that that is pretty straight on there too. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing with the other side. This is, this is really kind of basic Scrapbook 101. This is definitely an, an easy layout if you're feeling overwhelmed, especially if you're feeling overwhelmed by some of these um, elaborate layouts I've been showing, then this is the layout for you. So just try to position it again so that it's just pretty, pretty equal on both sides. But this isn't the county fair. Nobody's going to measure your seams or anything like that. All right. And then that's kind of basically all we're going to do for the border. And then we just do the, the decorating. And I chose to use the Christmas tree. And I do plan to use um, more of the stickers in here on future layouts. So if you have the stickers, um, you know, we will be using them. We already used the, the music notes on a couple layouts ago. And we're gonna take the Christmas tree and I positioned it so that the bottom of the Christmas tree was kind of, let's see, where's my ruler? Kind of about five inches down. Uh, I think I wanna rest it on here. I like it, I want it to be on the bottom of a line. It doesn't probably make any difference. I think I'm gonna go down to that one actually, which is like at five and a, almost to the five and a half inches down mark. And then we're gonna decorate. Now you can choose, on this one I did the star on top, but I think this one I'm gonna use the angel. So you can decide which you prefer to put on top of your tree. A little angel on our tree. And then there are these ornaments here. And then these are little circles. They're not exactly ornaments, but I use them as ornaments. Or you have these little stars you can also use. Um, and some bows. But whenever I do, there's there are three of the, well, there's four of the white ornaments, but I'm only going to use three. I like, uh, maybe I've been watching too many Noreen videos, but I like the, the rule of three just to have be a little bit off, you know, not too, too symmetrical. And so I'm going to kind of put one up here and I'm going to put one over here. And then I'm going to put one down here kind of off to the side a little bit. And you could put another one in there. And then I'm gonna put these little sunburst balls, just kind of fill in some of this empty space, just kind of like when you're decorating your own tree, right? You look at it and say, oh yeah, there's an empty spot right there. Try to get it a little, not too symmetrical, but not too boring. Okay, I'm gonna just use all of them. And if you want to keep going, you can put those stars, but that might be a little bit much. Um, I think we're going to use the presents for something else, so don't put those under the tree. And then I chose to use the words peace and joy. Um, you could also use, you know, I'll be home for Christmas. Making spirits bright might be fun if you were, um, you know, if you were going to use this for like you're decorating the tree page. But I love this peace and joy together, and I'm just going to center it. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. I'm all still, again, I'm gonna rest it on a line. That looks pretty centered to me, peace. So I know that this has five letters and so the A is the middle and then I'm gonna put the and right under the A. And, and then the joy is also a, an odd number and it's also gonna come down here on this line, peace and joy. I actually think I want it down just a hair. Peace and joy. All right, so there's there's our whole border. We talked um, in a previous video, I asked what you guys thought about 
you know, pre-made borders and then just being done. And you all agreed with me that it's better to go ahead and put that on a layout. So that's what we're going to do. But you could save this for another, um, another, you know, a future layout if you don't want to keep going with this with this particular layout. All right, now we're going to stick this down. I've lost my regular tape. I got lots and lots of repo. Okay, here's one. Um, and I'm going to use the regular this time. This was a special um, tape runner case we had a few years ago, but um, just somehow if, if you can keep track of which is which, you know that the uh, the repositionable is the green and the regular is clear. Um, I sometimes have put a piece of washi tape, green washi tape on my repositionable so I could tell it apart, but whatever works for you, it, it's not the end of the world if you grab your repo and you mean your mean to use your um, regular, but it's a pain if you grab your regular when you want to use your repo. And then I'm going to um, position this so that the um, the edge of the red is at the half inch mark. So about a half an inch from the edge. And that way I'll just line it up on my page. And what I, what you could do, you could put your, um, photo mats. The reason we cut them at three and three quarters is so it would leave a little gap. You could absolutely put your photo mats like this. You could put your photo mats like this. You could put them like this because you're going to use these as a photo mat. So you really don't see the direction of those ornaments once you get the picture on there, I promise. So it doesn't really matter which way you want to do it. Um, maybe I will do it like this. And then, then we can put our ornaments in there. Okay, so I'm going to change it up. I did it this way, but you do it the way you want your pictures to be. But I do want to leave this top section to hang our little ornaments. So I'm going to use repo. Oh, I know. Although with the dark green paper like this, if I try to move this, it's probably going to pick up the color and, and pull that off. So, um, you know, I, I may not be able to move these later. I mean, you'll, I'll be able to move them, but I'll then have to make sure I cover it up. All right. So here I'm going to put my, my photos this way this time. And you really could be done. You could completely, this, this layout could be, could be done just like this, but we have these little, these little strings <laughs> and we have the, um, embellishments. And so I thought it would be fun to, to put another little um, decorative element up here in this corner. And that's to use the three little white and gold um, ornaments that come here in the embellishments. Okay, so we have kind of uh, these little old fashioned globy shaped ones. Actually, right now, I'm, I'm really liking putting my embellishments in uh, one of the, the photo boxes. This is the one I'm using for my samples, um, and I need to get another one so I can have one for these. Okay. Because it's really nice to just be able to, you know, sprinkle through them and find the ones. I promise there's another ornament. Oh, I should have found them first. All right, there it is. Sorry. Actually, I'll do this. Get those out of my way. And then we're going to take this piece of string, and I'm just going to break it into three pieces. So if it if it you know got torn up while you were um, while you're punching, that's totally fine. You can still use it. And and if you if it if it just got torn up a lot, you can just cut a little tiny sliver with your trimmer. Now there is a tip I learned from um, the amazing Sachio Omitsu, who you guys know from the CM blog, and she has her, um, I can't remember the name of her, her website, but something about Sachi's creative mind, maybe. And I learned this tip from her, and that's that you take your, let's see, you take your little tiny, tiny pieces and you line them up against each other so that they're all like this. And that way when we use our repositionable adhesive, we're not wasting because we're, I mean, you know, you could do these individually, but if you do them all at once, 
you're not wasting as much adhesive because you know you get the full width so now they're kind of stuck together all right and now i'm going to take my little ornaments and decide how i want to position them and some of that's going to depend on how you have your pictures if you had a vertical picture here um it, you oh i didn't want that one um you could you could change it but i like again that rule of three i don't i wouldn't do that i don't really want those on top of each other so i think what i did the last time was something like this where i positioned them in a rule of three so now i'm just going to peel these little guys apart and see where i want them to be obviously if you have one that's longer than the others you're going to want to um, Make sure you have a piece that's long enough to go all the way down here to this little guy. And just stick those down. A little piece tore off, so it's good that I had enough. And then this guy right here. And you could go farther down if you want. Better to make it a little bit too long than too short because we're going to cover this up with... Um, with the actual ornaments. And then I chose to use the foam squares. This might depend on where in your album it's going to be. If this is gonna be the inside edge, you might not want it to be as bulky, but what the heck, live dangerously. So I'm just gonna use a couple foam squares. I tend to use maybe more foam squares than I need, and I do like to be able to mix and match the sizes because I don't want these. I'm sure that eventually they are gonna get squished down a little bit, but I want them to keep their dimension as much as possible. So I do tend to probably use more than, more foam squares than some people do. All right, there are my little foam squares. I kinda don't know if I need to put one up here. Maybe I do. And what I like to do sometimes is to take my scissors. I like the microchip scissors because they're, um, they've got the Teflon coating. I'm just going to cut this little guy in half while it's on the backing sheet. I'm going to cut, cut two of them in half because I need three pieces. And then I can have this little teeny, teeny piece that I can put right up here on the ornament hanger part of my ornament. All right. And then how did I have these? That's got a little... Like it didn't punch out quite right, the little die cut shape. Okay, so then we'll peel off these little backs. And put these on. Just lining up the, the little ornament hanger top part with the center of our string that we've made, our little paper string. Put this one all the way down here. And then I want to just kind of stagger this a little bit, making sure that you don't go off the edge because that would not be good. right about here okay there we go with our little um, ornaments and now I'm just gonna take my scissors and trim off the excess actually looks like that one I kind of pulled a little it's not straight okay now it's straight pull off the excess now we'll zoom back out Man, I wish I had a remote that I could figure out how to do this. I need to get one of those fancy um, setups for these YouTubes instead of just my phone. Um, but here you go. This is the this is the finished layout that we have. Now you're going to want to put your pictures on here. Oh, I'm trying not to use this hot pink um, post-it notes because I know it's super obnoxious, but that's what I got. So the picture that you're going to want to put on here is going to be... Um, 
three and a half by five and a quarter. So that's the size photo that's going to fit in these in these photo boxes. And so if you're if you're saving this layout for later, you may want to write yourself a little note to remind yourself of what size photo. Maybe you even write three and a half by five and a quarter photo size. Okay, so there you go. This is our peace and joy border um, scrapbook layout. Looks like I did this a little bit taller than I did the other one, um, but you want to have a place to journal. So I'm going to write about, um, you know, I'm going to write about how she went up on the choir thing. So if, if I were on this one, I would have to fit my journaling more into here. But I think it's cute. I think it's fun. It was good for just having a few pictures. And I know I was talking to somebody recently about how because we take pictures with our phones now, it's different. I have a lot more cases where I have a picture, maybe not so much at Christmas, although I do have that coming up. I do have one picture just of me. So maybe we will have that for a future video, uh, a layout with only one picture. So anyway, peace and joy layout, uh, border layout using the picket fence cartridge and some foam squares and the embellishments. So there you go. I hope this was a nice, simple layout for you. You could easily, easily turn this into a double page layout just by putting another page. If you if you left off the um, the border, you could put the border on the other side. You know, if you want to do the borders on both sides and not put this on there, of course. Um, if, if you wanted to, you could leave the border off and put these on this side and then just use all of this for pictures. So if you prefer to do a double page layout, this would be super easy to turn into a double page layout. So I hope this is one that you'll try. I hope that you will give your picket fence border cartridge some love. And for me, frankly, using it just as a, um, as a, um, a, a chevron edge works really well for that. All right. So thank you so much for, um, for joining me again. I will be back um, again next week. I'm aiming for Tuesdays and Saturdays. When I very first started this, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I'm still not 100% sure. Um, actually, this weekend, I am at the Stamp and Scrapbook Expo in Atlanta working in the Creative Memories booth. So uh, if, you're, if you're there, um, although I think I'm posting that, I think I'm going to have this posted Saturday. So it's probably too late. But um, so this I'm, I'm recording ahead so that I can post it later. Um, but I hope you'll see me and, and I'll be back with probably not quite this simple a layout, but hopefully not one that's quite as crazy as last time. So thanks so much for watching. Merry Christmas and happy scrapbooking.